When the pH is 7, then it's a case where the sample is neither acids nor base. But less than 7, it's an acid, we say. More than 7, it's a base all the way. Welcome back. In the last video, we looked at some of the actual reactions that produce both sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxides. And looked at some of the chemical equations for those reactions as well. What we're going to do in this video is cover the next top point, which says assess the evidence that indicates increase in atmospheric concentrations of oxides of sulfur and nitrogen. So in this top point, we have to assess, we have to look at the evidence and say yes or no, is there an increase in the concentration of the oxides of both sulfur and nitrogen? So before we start, I want to quickly go over what qualitative and what quantitative evidence was, because we're going to go over both of these in this video. Quantitative refers to numbers. So if you, for example, give statistics, any number evidence when it comes to what we're looking for, so in this case, the increase in the concentration. Qualitative is descriptive. So descriptive means, yeah, not numbers, but some other evidence we can use to hint at an increase. So I'll give you a quick example to kind of make it, make it easy to understand. So this is the, for example, if we're being asked for the evidence for how well someone's doing at school, right? So if we look at the quantitative evidence, the number evidence, we could look at your report card, you know, how, how good are your grades, are you getting A, B, Ds, or your percentage in the, in the exam, so 80% or 50%. These are numbers we can use to answer that question. That's our quantitative evidence, number evidence. Whereas qualitative evidence could be the feedback from the teachers. So what have the teachers been saying about your performance? That's not numbers, but that's descriptive evidence, so feedback from teachers, or just your own self-confidence. Are you feeling confident in school? That could be also an assessment of how well you're doing. And this is the descriptive evidence. So we're going to go through descriptive and the number evidence for how the, if there's an increase in the concentration of the oxides of sulfur and nitrogen. So I'll start with nitrogen oxides. And the first was the qualitative evidence. This was number, uh, the descriptive evidence. Descriptive. Now, for example, we know that smog is caused by pollutants. So for example, SO2 and the oxides of nitrogen, these causes photochemical smog. And we know that areas that have lots of cars and things that would usually actually release nitrogen oxide also have lots of photochemical smog. And this is what photochemical smog looks like. It's just really hazy. So by having, by knowing that areas that have a lot more smog are usually also areas that have a lot more polluting things like cars and industry, we can guess that, that um, the nitrogen oxides are actually causing the smog. Also, same areas that are heavily polluted also have lots of acid rain. And we're going to go over acid rain much more in the next video. But acid rain is caused by SO2, sulfur dioxide, and the oxides of nitrogen, especially dioxide, nitrogen dioxide. So by having areas that have lots of you know, cars and rails having a lot more acid rain compared to a bush or farm area, we can guess that it's actually the sulfur dioxide and nitrogen dioxide, which must be increasing because of the actual polluting things we have in our environment that is causing this acid rain. And also there's a lot more irritation of eyes. And so the actual oxides of nitrogen, especially nitrogen monoxide, actually causes irritation of our eyes. So we just feel really annoyed in our eyes. It just becomes watery. And in areas that have lots of photochemical smog, we have people who are suffering from this problem, this syndrome, this irritation of eyes, which suggests that this photochemical smog has our oxides of nitrogen present. So these are a qualitative evidence. These are not numbers, but this is just a way we can sort of gauge at the increase, even without having numbers. Now the quantitative, so the number evidence for an increase in, in nitrogen levels is dissolved gas and ice. And what this means, like you can hear we have a ice probe. This is an ice probe. And the way this works is this comes from the Antarctic or anywhere else that has lots of ice. And the way this works is this part here is newly formed ice. So maybe it's about 10 years old, for example, whereas the bottom ice would be really old ice that's formed a long time ago. This might be 150 years old. And what we do is we look at the actual dissolved gases in it. And so what we can do is the gas itself dissolves. So if this gas here in this area is, let's say, a lot lower, so it's low compared to here, sorry, the other way around, the new area has a lot higher levels of nitrogen monoxide dissolved compared to the old areas, that would mean that over the last 150 years, there's been an increase in the concentration. And we can use these ice probes to analyze that. 
And then we have also just yeah, generally that we have higher levels of nitrogen monoxides in populated areas. We can test it, so we have probes who can test the early concentrations of nitrogen monoxide, and we know that they are in rural areas, so in farmland or rural areas. This has lower compared to urban areas. You have lots of cars because the main actual source of nitrogen oxides are from cars. So more cars, the more NOx, so the nitrogen, the oxides of nitrogen in the atmosphere. Now sulfur oxide, again, we've got the same evidence. We've got lots more smog, acid rain, and these come from not only the oxides of nitrogen, but also of sulfur dioxide. So the more we have of this, the, our qualitative evidence, the descriptive evidence, suggests that there's more sulfur dioxide as well. And also the nitrogen oxides, this causes irritation of eyes, whereas sulfur oxides causes respiratory problems. This is uh, breathing problems, especially for people who suffer from asthma. So patients who suffer from asthma, if they're in the areas where they have lots of SO2 pollution, that's sulfur, sulfur dioxide pollution, then the levels of asthma would be a lot higher as well. And that's exactly what we're finding as well. We're finding high levels of asthma in areas that are heavily polluted. Now our qualitative evidence, our quantitative evidence, our number of evidence, is that we have high areas that are have coal power plants, have high levels of SO2 than areas which don't have coal power plants. Now this makes sense because coal power plants are the ones that release a lot of our SO2. So our evidence that it's increasing is that if we have a coal power plant which is actually about producing sulfur dioxide, the levels close to that power plant are much higher than normal areas, which suggests that we have an increase in the sulfur dioxide concentrations because of these um, industry. Another area is the copper smelting. We mentioned earlier that making metals, so metal smelting generally produces sulfur dioxide as a byproduct. And if you compare the area close to a smelting area, a copper industry area, that has higher SO2 levels so because it's released in the atmosphere than your normal areas that don't have this copper smelting power plant, a plant. All right, so these were the, this, these are the numbers. Again, we've gauged it by using a probe to actually look at the numbers and the numbers come up that we have more SO2 being released in areas that actually emit them as well. So the, says, assess the evidence indicate the increase in the atmosphere concentration of ox oxides of sulfur and nitrogen. So the evidence, both our qualitative and our quantitative, suggests that there is an increase in the concentration of sulfur and nitrogen in the our atmosphere. Some of the qualitative evidence were things like smog, acid rain, the irritation of eyes for nitrogen oxides and the respiratory problems, increase in respiratory problems for sulfur oxide. Some of the quantitative evidence was that we have these ice probes and they show that the levels of dissolved gas were higher now than they were 150 years ago. And we have the fact that we can check urban areas versus rural areas. We can see there are high levels of these nitrogen monoxides and dioxides in urban areas, which have lots of cars compared to rural areas. And also that power plants and copper smelting plants have higher SO2 levels than normal areas. So these all hint that there's been an increase over the last hundreds or so years. But overall, if you're living in Australia, and especially in Sydney, you don't have to worry too much because our government has put in policy in place and this policy is there to protect our atmosphere and at the moment we're doing quite well so there's now our pollution is under control some areas in the world obviously are still having problems especially you, you countries like china who are trying to calm the problem as well they're trying to fix it as well but because they're rapidly developing so fast they've had to make sure the policy comes in place to make sure that it doesn't happen on a large scale. But in Australia, we're doing quite well when it comes to sulfur oxide and nitrogen oxides. But these were some of the qualitative and quantitative evidence that overall over the last 150 years, there's been an increase in these concentrations. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.